A quick summary of the series so far. We are going into a journey of becoming one with him. And when we started this series, I said, you know, God's presence is your greatest provision. So it is parochial, pardon my use of this word, it is even stupid to be seeking God, God give me, God give me. When God says, I am all yours, I am all yours, all, all you need is in my presence. So if you seek, you know, so many Bible verses, they seek it for the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added to you. There are various degrees in the kind of relationship we can have. And I said the presence of God is the greatest provision. Why? Because that presence also gives us vision. It is in this light we see light. And so it's possible to live a hundred years on this earth and never see. And you eat, you drink, you can even have children, but you have not seen nothing. Because you have not seen in his light. Hallelujah. And so, you know, these are the things that we have been thinking about. And I said, when you become born again, what actually happens is that your spiritual senses are activated. When you and I are born, when a child is born, you check if the child can see, if the child can hear. So the gas call, I think, how the child grabs. <laughs> but all these senses that enables us to experience the conscious world, they are reproduced in the spiritual, that makes you able to experience the spiritual world. And so you can see in the spirit, you can hear in the spirit, you can touch and be touched in the spirit, you can taste. And I said maturity begins when you begin to understand how to use those senses. And I think two weeks ago we said from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, Paul was speaking to the Ephesians there. And I told you about the book of Ephesians, the first three chapters is about our inheritance, the last three chapters is about our work and our warfare. Amen. I'll acknowledge and I appreciate those who are joining us for the first time, both online and in-house. Amen. I can see God's time. I can see Josephine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Just acknowledge you and uh, you're welcome. Now, we said there are three things which I almost passed by. Thank God for <laughs> Pastor Bobka. There are three things. If you want to be strong, one, you must understand your identity. Last week we saw the prodigal son and his brother and what happened. They lost the fight of faith. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, Paul said, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you are called. The prodigal son uh, he did not fight that faith. He left. He left. He lost his identity. He did not continue to lay hold on that which was his inheritance. He said, give me. Let me go and find somewhere else. And I said, what is the substance of your faith? The substance of your life is what you engage your faith in. You can engage your faith in seeking God and getting to know God more and everything opens to you or you can engage your faith in other things. I can engage my faith now so seriously on getting a new job, getting a new house. I'm not saying those things are wrong. But this young man, he took his inheritance, 
He left the father, and the Bible said he spent his substance on riotous living. He spent it on living in a particular way that was riotous, so it was a waste of substance. And so it is very possible as a Christian to be taught wrongly and to expend my spiritual energy and my spiritual substance, that which is actually my inheritance. What is my inheritance? What is your inheritance in Christ? Is the presence of God. That's why, that's why Jesus died. He died to bring us into the presence of God. What was lost in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, what did they lose actually? Was it the garden? It wasn't the garden. It was what was in the garden. So this prodigal son, what he did was he took his inheritance, he took that which was the substance of his destiny, and the Bible said he spent it on worthless things. It's a serious thing to consider. Amen. I've said before, there are different dimensions of engagement with God, and they are not wrong. It's just that that's the way it is. To some people, he said, ask, and you shall be given. You are still my son. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and keep knocking until I open the door, because you are so far away. But he said, for some people, he said, before they ask, I have answered. He said, while they are yet thinking about it, I have performed it. And so you, you decide, you and I decide which category we want to belong to. I'm not preaching last Sunday, but your sense of identity is being in that middle line. Because, you know, the senior brother was in the house, but he never laid hold of anything at all. He was in the house, but he didn't make any effort to know the father. He had become so disengaged with the father that even when his brother was welcomed back, he got annoyed. That's not the spirit of the father. That's not the spirit of the son. So he was in the house, but he was not in the same spirit with the father. And so these are things that we need to uh, take uh, notice of. And I said from that Ephesians 6.10, if you want to be strong, you need to understand your identity. It is only your identity that determines your inheritance. You cannot, you, you cannot enjoy God, you cannot access God more than your sense of your identity. Because before you can access that inheritance, they will say, okay, where is your identity? Do you belong to this family that you want to claim part of the will? And Jesus said, if you deny me before men, then forget it, because you don't have a place for me to also present you before my father. Nobody will deny him. And nobody will lose their inheritance in him. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now this morning I want to go to the next one, which is we have to train to discern between good and evil. Amen. In Matthew chapter 10, like I said, when we started this series, we are not so textual because I'm trying to lay some foundations, which is why on Wednesday now, I just feel we need to go a bit deeper in the scriptures in order to really get and not rush through some of these things. They are so key, they are so foundational. In Matthew chapter 10 and verse 16, Jesus said, he said, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Jesus was saying we need to understand discernment, which is the ability to, dis, to, to detect 
motives and the spirit behind motives. He said, I, I send you out, be, be wise as serpents, be, be gentle as doves, be, be discerning, be, be present, be, be attentive when you are with people. Listen beyond words. <laughs> it, it takes training. It takes exercise to do that. You see, naturally, evil is repulsive. Evil is repulsive and revolting and dangerous because it destroys, it contaminates. If you stay too long in the, in the, in the, in the vicinity of evil, it will contaminate you. And if you are not careful, it can destroy. And so there's a natural revulsion towards evil either through someone's speech or tone or even body language. Hmm. Which is why I don't go into politics, but, but which is why sometimes I, I find it difficult to understand, you know, Christians who uh, say uh, somebody who, is, uh, who says very repulsive things and so on and so forth is the one who represents God to them. He's the one who is fighting God's battle for them. <laughs> Amen. Because naturally, you are, if, if you are in a place where somebody is displaying certain evil things, you want to say, I want to get out of here. <laughs> I don't want to be here. That is the natural, in the natural. I'm not talking about spiritual now. I'm just saying naturally. The body abhors evil because you don't want to be contaminated with that. In Romans chapter 12, Paul was speaking there and challenging us not to be conformed because the danger is we live in a world where there is an identity crisis. You see, that's just the problem. It, everybody in the world goes through that, finding identity, wanting to belong here, wanting to belong there, you find all manner of associations and things. Everybody wants to belong somewhere. That identity crisis began in the Garden of Eden. It was throughout the life of Jesus. It is what every human being will go through. And so the challenge is that in this world of crisis, where are you standing? If you stay too long in the vicinity of evil and you are not discerning that this thing is not right, it will suck you in and can destroy you. And that is why we need to develop discernment. We need to develop how to discern is this good, is this evil. Now it doesn't come automatically spiritually. It comes through exercise. Romans chapter 12, Paul said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the message of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And said, do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, which, so that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So there is something trying to make you conform. There is something trying to transform you. And there are two separate things. And you see, this is where information, knowledge, comes into play. Because knowledge is informative, but God's wisdom is directive. And so the quality of information you receive and you work with determines the direction of your life and destiny. So God forbid that you are exposed to wrong information. It can delay your life. It can lead you into a cul-de-sac. It can stagnate your destiny. Because information and wisdom I mean, knowledge and wisdom, they work together. 
you cannot be wise beyond the foundation of the knowledge that you are standing on. It's just that when that knowledge gives you facts and information, wisdom shows you how to apply it and engage it and use it and make it productive and make it fruitful and make it beneficial to your life. In other words, you cannot walk in wisdom without knowledge. And so if, if you are not careful, this is where the, 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 what we are talking about in terms of discernment is so crucial. Not only for us to learn it, but also to teach our children how to discern what is good and what is evil. Because both evil information is out there and good information is out there. And this morning, I hope we'll be able to just look at a few things that can guide us into how can I align myself with what is good. In Psalm 1, David writing there said, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the paths of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And you see how that really works in terms of growing in discernment. It's very interesting that he, he uses three, three different, you know, phrases there. The first is to walk. You know, when you are walking, <laughs> when you start to walk, you know, it looks innocent. But if you are not careful, you still, you still stand in it and become comfortable until you actually sit and reside there. Nobody will reside in evil in Jesus' name. But he said, when you delight in the law of the Lord, he said, you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. It talks about your root, the root, the source, and the generation of your inspiration of your motivation are, are rooted somewhere, are rooted in him. He says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever. When your root is in the right place, you do as occasion serves you. You, you do as occasion serves you. In other words, you, you, you wake up and things happen that you make happen. Your life is not built on an expectation of what has happened in the past. Your life starts to be built on an expectation of promises of things that are going to be. So you begin to live and bring your future to you. Your future begins to come to you. Because of the, the state of your mind, where your root is. Amen. You know, the Bible says we are trees of righteousness, the plantings of the Lord that he may be glorified. Do you think the trees out there, they are still just drinking from rain that fell? No, no. It is constant. They are constantly being refreshed. Some trees are so deeply rooted, they are connected to the water table. They are drawing from sources we cannot see. Amen. When you are planted by the rivers of water. And so these, these, are, these are the things that we, we need to understand why we need to grow in the ability to discern. There is natural discernment and there is also spiritual discernment. And discernment is ability to see beyond the facts. So somebody comes and presents a certain facts to you or somebody is talking to you and <laughs> the person is saying A, B, C, D, E, F. You know, pastor, this is A, B, C, D. And God is telling you <laughs> X, Y, Z. They say this matter is not A, B, C. It's J, K, L, M. <laughs> Amen. See beyond the facts. And I tell you, that can go a long way to help your life and help your path and make decisions, and understand circumstances, and do the right thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once you start becoming comfortable with evil, you begin to lose discernment. 
you begin to lose it. It begins to lose it. Thank God for the prodigal son that one day he actually sat and was going to struggle with a pig to eat and then something came back to him and said, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing here? He had lost the salmon so much so that he came back to the father and said, look, I'm no longer qualified to be your son. I lost everything. Just make me one. Even the servants are better. Make me, just make me a servant. The father said, no, you are still my son. You just lost it. You will not lose your identity. You will not lose your place in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 14. Very quickly, this is a very, very loaded area. The Bible says in verse 15 of Proverbs chapter 14, the simple believes every word. The simple does what? Believes every word. He said, but the prudent considers well his steps. A wise man fears and departs from evil, but a fool rages and is self-confident. A quick-tempered man acts foolishly, and a man of wicked intentions is hated. The simple inherit fully, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. Listen very carefully. The, the word foolish there, the word simple there simply means foolish. Simply means foolish. Foolish, not acting on facts, and not applying facts in a way that makes for wisdom. The word means foolish. The simple, really that Proverbs chapter 14, 15, 15 to 18 again. It means being foolish, being simple, being simple. Easily enticed, easily seduced, inexperienced. Just take anything that, that comes. Jesus said, be as wise as serpents, be as gentle as doves. Don't be a fool. Whenever and whatever makes you to start stepping away from God's words or God's instructions will make you start to lose discernment. You start to lose how to make right judgment because God's word is the final arbiter is the standard of judgment for living. So whatever prevents you from reading God's word, whatever prevents you from studying God's word, whatever prevents you from, you know, whatever excuse. We have many excuses. We have many reasons. Amen. But I want you to just understand this, that whatever succeeds in limiting the time you spend with God it's actually disconnecting you from discernment. In other words, the more you are disconnected, the more you are likely to make wrong judgments. Does it make sense? Hallelujah. Whatever the reason, could be work, work is good. God says don't be lazy, amen. <laughs> work is good. <laughs> You may be caring for your kids. Fantastic. The woman of God, Gloria Copeland, when she was uh, bringing up the children and trying to help her husband in ministry, she said God instructed that every month she went through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John three times, every month. Oh, she was still caring for the children. She was still making a house. She was still cooking for her husband. But a, 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 a day came as she went. She was going through that. It takes effort. It takes determination. Now she has such a healing ministry that came from just spending time and eating the word. It just started one day. Her husband said, please pray for the sick. And Miracles began to happen. That's what I'm saying is whatever the excuse, really, 
the result is that if you disconnect, the more you disconnect, the more you are likely to make decisions that later on you will find were not of good judgment. Fight the good fight of faith. <laughs> this is the good fight of faith. Amen. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 5. Let's get into it now and see what are the things we, we need to do. Hebrews chapter 5, from verse 12. The writer of Hebrews says, For though by this time, time, the measure of our consciousness, Time, point A to point B, cannot be measured by time. And so you find that in the spirit, maturity is not measured by time. It's only measured by what you do in time. And so somebody can be 70 years, 80 years, you know. When it comes to spiritual maturity, that has no meaning. If for those 70 years, you have not spent time with God. Is somebody with me? Are you with me? He said, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, yet you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. So by this time, by this time, you ought yourself to have become, you, you needed to have spent enough time for you to be able to impart knowledge as a teacher, but you have not. He said, and you have come to need milk and not solid food, for everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. For it's a babe, but solid food belongs to those who are full of age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. What we are talking about only comes about through a steady application, a steady application of spiritual discipline, a steady application of spiritual discipline. And I'll be honest with you, many times we, we, we want instant, we want quick things, we want, you know, things to happen very quickly. And I tell you honestly, the God we serve is a God of miracles. We have been looking at that in the early morning for a few days, you know. You cannot live your life as a Christian and not expect signs and wonders. If you are living and you are not expecting things to happen that are beyond normal, then I wonder if you are really connected to Jesus. I, I just wonder. <laughs> because he said, these signs shall follow you who believe. He said, in my name you will ask anything and it will be done. So what are, he didn't make empty promises. So you can't be a believer and not, and not wake up in the morning and say, okay, <laughs> God, what is happening today? Come on. <laughs> it's another day the Lord has made. Amen. There is something ahead that will make me joyful today. You, you, cannot, you cannot wake up. That is what the Bible says. It says, this is the day the Lord has made. I'll be glad and I'll be, I will rejoice in it. You know? I woke up one morning and, 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 you know, I was trying to study. And the Holy Spirit said, you know, he said, for every day, that you woke up and you were not joyful. Say, begin to repent now. So before I can talk to you, begin to repent now. He said, repent for every day. Every day you woke up since you were born and you were feeling grumpy. He said, repent. Because in every day I have prepared something for you. So enter each day with expectation. Forget about the circumstances. Wake up with excitement. And say, this is the day the Lord made this day. He made it. He made it for me. Hallelujah. He made it for my victory. He made it for my triumph. You will wake up each day with faith. You wake up each day with joy. You wake up each day with strength to face whatever circumstances. Hallelujah. 
So Hebrews chapter 5 tells us a steady application of spiritual discipline is what enables us to grow. There is no parking space. There is no time to stand and stop and wait. Amen. Amen. Last week I said, you become what you believe. And what you believe, if you are not careful, what you believe can become stale. In other words, we move in a very dynamic spiritual atmosphere. And when Satan came to Jesus in the wilderness, God had just spoken, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And then Satan came and said, if you are the son of God. And Jesus said, shut up. Shut up. Amen. You are not the one to tell me who I am. I know who I am. But he said something else. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, which is that which nourishes the physical and nourishes the mind. He said, but by every word that proceeds, present, continuous. In other words, the word that came yesterday, it was good for yesterday. You need to sit down for the one for today. Because the broadcasting station has not stopped. It is broadcasting 24 by 7. Are you with me? Do you know as we are speaking now, all the channels, CNN, they are 24 hour channel. The same way, heaven, 24 hour channel. 24 hour what? Channel. So if today you are tuning to the news of yesterday, you have already missed one day. That is so important for us to realize that application of spiritual discipline, that discipline, that discipline, amen, of seeking his face on a daily basis, of listening to him on a daily basis, of encountering on a daily basis, God is not tired of speaking to you. Don't be tired of listening to him. Amen. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 24, in the Olivet Discourse, Jesus said certain things. When his disciples, they asked him, they said, what are the signs of your coming? And Jesus said certain things, and on the top of the list was deception. He said, you know, the greatest challenge Christians will face is deception. Deception, wrong knowledge, wrong information, by people who deliberately give wrong information in order to deceive. He said even the very elect can be deceived. Let's, let's look at that, Matthew 24. And if you give me a few more minutes, I'm going to tell you just five things that we, we need to do. So Jesus in Matthew chapter 24, I'll just run through it in verse 4. Jesus answered his disciples because they were saying, what are the signs? How do we know when you are coming? Jesus said, take heed that no one deceives you. He said, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. You remember one of the temptations of Jesus, Satan came when he said, it is written. <laughs> Satan said, hey, you want, you want to go there? I can go there with you. <laughs> Satan said, but you know it is also written. He will give his angels charge over you. Just jump. And so what I'm telling you is that, listen, you must develop maturity to begin to able to discern what you are being taught. Amen? Don't just open your mouth and just swallow anything. And we will we'll look at it. It's important because 
In verse 11, Jesus said, he said, then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Because they will see people doing lawless things, and yet it looks like uh, their prophecy is working. It will look like they are performing miracles. And people will engage occultic means just deliberately in order to deceive people with false signs and wonders. Amen. So that's what you want. Jesus never said, look for church members. Check your Bible. There was nowhere in the Bible where God said, you know, church, you know he said disciples. Disciples are disciplined people. Disciplined what? Disciplined people who will go and check. Not just walk like a like, uh, dumb dumb. <laughs> I told some people to be eating grass because they are sheep and they are eating grass. Ah, are you, have you gone crazy? Is this, is this hypnotism? <laughs> have, have you been hypnotized? <laughs> you know? But believe me, this is, this is, this is, this is, the, this is Jesus' warning. This is Jesus' warning. That is why, you know, you have a duty to your destiny to mature. You have what? You have a duty to your destiny to mature. Even if you don't like yourself, like your children. <laughs> because you have, a, you have a responsibility in those children. You know, respect your, your, the, that responsibility enough to know, to be able to tell them this is what is right. We live in a world that is confused, but we have an anchor that has held from the beginning of time in the Holy Scriptures. So it's important we know how to dictate detect motives, know where the motive, know where it is coming from. Amen. Okay, I can see I'm running over time now. Uh, which I, I, It's like I do that almost every week now. <laughs> Praise God. You know, but in our daily encounter and challenges, Paul tells us in the Second Corinthians chapter 10, he said we need spiritual weapons. You know, the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. On Wednesday, I will look at that, that area, how we fight and what we fight. Amen. Amen. False teachings, false information. Motives are different. Amen. Praise God. Twisting the scriptures for various reasons. Uh, the Bible warns us against it. The sermons helps you to actually locate the motive and the motivating spirit. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21, he said, test all things. Test it. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, John says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test, test the spirit, whether they are of God. He said, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Hallelujah. But God's word tells us that inside God's word, everything about your life is already settled. Everything. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. He said, His divine power has given us all things, all things, all things that pertain to life and godliness through His precious promises, that by these promises we can be partakers of His divine nature. So, <laughs> my friend, you need to know those promises for yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
every issue of life is contained there. And um, I'm not going to rush these things because I have five things that helps you to grow. Amen? Do you want me to go through them? Uh, some people are not so... <laughs> Amen. No, seriously. We can deal with it on Wednesday. But these are five things that, that they are so important that I don't want to just run through them. Uh, amen? Praise God. But I believe that this morning, if for anything, you understand the need for discernment. What Jesus himself said about why it's important for us to have the right knowledge. If you don't have the right knowledge, you cannot have the right direction. The right direction. And he's the good shepherd. Amen. And so he's the good shepherd. The main reason, what, what is our life about? What is the meaning of life? You know, your life and my life is to glorify God. What really glorifies God? Do you know what glorifies God? What glorifies God is when every gift in you, every reason why God made you, becomes fulfilled. It doesn't glorify God that you are not fulfilling your potential, that you are not becoming all you can be, that you feel, you feel stagnated, you feel you know, stunted. That doesn't glorify God. Now, it takes the right information because, you know, it is your internal conversations that determine what comes to you externally. Your internal dialogue. There's a dialogue going inside you all the time. Nobody can see it. Pastor can't see it. What is affecting that internal dialogue is the kind of information you are receiving. So if you have a closeness with God, you have a relationship with God, you have a conversation with the Holy Spirit, it begins to affect the kind of internal dialogue that is going on inside you. Somebody tells you, you, you your head is big, you just laugh, you, say you don't know what you are talking about. Because the internal dialogue inside you is different. And so what he tells another person, and that person throughout the day, he's not himself. So can you imagine? He said, my head is big. Eh? The whole day is destabilized because <laughs> he doesn't have... So what I'm saying is that your future is in your hand. Your future is at hand. Depends on how you manage that garden that is inside with appropriate information. Appropriate information. Appropriate information lead you in the right direction. Shorting things brings the glory out of you. The glory is already in you. It is the gifts, the talents, the things that God breathed in you when you were born. Many people don't touch it. They don't scratch it because they want to be like somebody else. They are looking, they, are, they want to, you know, but the glory is inside you. Who you are is great enough. If only you can get the right information that will switch you on. Hallelujah. Okay, I've just rounded up so that I can shift those five things to next Wednesday. Let's rise up on our feet. Hallelujah.